Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to continue our series around needs analysis and specifically we're going to examine now a needs-based rather than an income-based needs analysis for life insurance. And the first thing we're going to do here, we're going to work through some assumptions. So whether this is correct or not, I don't really care if these are the actual numbers you would arrive at. But let's assume that you could sit down with a client and based on a cash flow statement and some projections. So we're going to have to get out the crystal ball a little bit here, although a lot of financial planning is really very much about getting that crystal ball to work for you to some extent anyways. And let's say out of this cash flow in these projections, we come to this set of numbers. We say, all right, client, if you died today, what would your family need? Assuming this is a family needs analysis situation, what would your family need in order to get by? How would your family cope with this financially? And dealing only with income shortfalls, obviously you're going to have some lump sum stuff, so deal with the lump sum stuff separately, and that's where you're going to cover off things like debts, and if there's maybe a short-term need to replenish some funds, if you're going to dip into emergency funds, for example, you want to replenish those. Maybe you've got some charitable contributions to deal with. And something that often gets overlooked here would be a reasonable period of bereavement, which is very hard to math out, but you should have some period of adjustment where the family is going to maybe see one of the see the surviving income earner take time off work. There might be some uh, maybe you need to go and see the grandparents or to go on just a holiday to uh, give everybody a chance to reset or all kinds of things like that where you might need some just some lump sum cash here in order to deal with these costs. So we say in addition to that lump sum and obviously funeral costs and so forth in there, we say what would you need on an ongoing basis? So let's say that we could break this down into a few different periods. And there's lots of different theories around this, but let's say that we have a period where we say, okay, we've got some time here while the kids are, in fact, I'm gonna move over here, sorry about that. We've got a period here where we say, what about, well, the kids are still dependent. So the kids are younger, they have a lot of requirements of mom and dad, and that's going to be fairly costly. And then we're going to identify another period, and it won't be the same in all situations, I get that. While the kids are in university, and this is where we start to do a little bit of financial planning, where we would say, did we actually have some funding already in place, that is, did we have an RESP in place as part of our needs analysis for that first period, and if we did, we should take that into account here. And then we might have a period where the kids are gone, and you're still pre-retirement. Sometimes we refer to this as uh, empty nester, if you want, or just pre-retirement. These are traditionally your best years in terms of your ability to save for retirement. And then you may have a period here, your early retirement years. And presumably, if you've got a couple here, we say, you know what, we figure probably they would have been together. And even if they divorced along the way somewhere, we would have done some separate planning for that. We say they presumably would have been together here. And in those early retirement years, they would have had some needs. And then they would have had their mid-retirement years, which are traditionally regarded as a little bit less expensive. And then you're going to have your late retirement years, where health care tends to be a bigger concern. And that might, again, be more costly. So 
we might be able to break down these different periods. And like I say, it's not going to be the same for everybody. It would be crazy to make that assumption. But as a way to look at this, we could maybe identify these six different periods. And if you're in a family where there are no kids yet, but they're planning to have kids, you might even have a seventh period up at the beginning here that talks about before the kids come along. So let's assume that these six periods apply in this particular circumstance. Probably this period when the kids are still dependent is going to be fairly pricey. So let's assume for this family we've gone through a fairly detailed analysis of their cash flow and we have determined that this need will be $60,000 a year and it will go on for 12 years. And then we go to this second period while the kids are in university and we say remember this is already funded and let's assume that we've talked about some goals and values around education for these kids and we do expect costs to decrease here. I know that won't always be the case but let's assume a $40,000 need here and we've got a couple of kids and we want to make sure they're going to have a good amount of funding in place for six years here. And then we say, hey, once the kids are gone, really, costs are going to be quite low here. And maybe we say we would have just needed about $5,000 a year, and that might take us through another 10 years. And then these early retirement years. So in these early retirement years, this is when things would have been more expensive because we're quite active and we would have counted on some Canada pension plan, some old age security from the other. Maybe we saved early. Maybe some of this $60,000 includes some retirement savings. Maybe some of this forty and some of this 5000 does. Let's say we still ended up a little bit short here, maybe $10,000 a year, which would be about the amount you might be missing from Canada pension plan and old age security together. And let's say we figure that's going to go on for another 10 years. And again, this very much depends on that crystal ball, but we can still make some estimates here. The mid-retirement years, maybe we say, ah, this isn't so worrisome. Maybe we don't need anything here. And maybe we figure that's going to be another 10 years. And then these late retirement years, well, this is when it would have been nice maybe to have this other person's income available. And we say the net here, between what it would have been nice to have this person around for and what it would have cost us is another $10,000 and we're going to plan on that for a final 15 years here. So we can take these numbers like so and sort of work with this and that's what we're going to do in the next video in order to arrive at a, a more precise needs analysis. Now the one other thing to contemplate here is we're going to have to use an assumed rate of return And keep in mind that this return is going to have to take into account inflation as well. So you're generally going to want to be fairly conservative here. You probably don't want to be taking a lot of risks around this. So maybe you say, if we're going to replace this, if we're going to have a present value, so we're going to end up solving for a present value here, and maybe we use a rate of return somewhere in the 3 to 4% range is probably about where you want to lie here as far as a fairly long-term return but also fairly conservative. So for our purposes here we are, we're going to use sorry we're going to use 3 percent. But if you sit down with a client and you decide that something higher than 3% is appropriate, that's perfectly fine as long as you can justify it. And of course, there is going to be a, a reasonable upper limit to that. And I would suggest 3 to 4% is probably good. If you're starting to get up into the 6, 7, 8% range, that's probably pretty aggressive, especially considering that you do have to take inflation into account there as well. I hope that helps. I hope that we have a good starting point for the discussion that's going to follow. Thank you very much and please tune in for the next video in this series.